Well, hello. Looking to make your sea perch that much cooler? Then you found the right place. In this video, I take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to turn a standard pressure sensor into a depth gauge. Steps one through seven of this building process are shown in this section of the video. Be sure to pause and refer back to this section as you go through each of these steps. It is also recommended that you test the pressure sensor whenever possible during these steps. The table here shows all the materials that will be needed to build the pressure sensor. On the left, the step in which the material is used is noted. In this table, the tools and equipment needed are shown, with the steps appearing on the left just as they did for the materials needed section. I want to briefly mention how cool pressure sensors are. These small electronic devices have a voltage come in and output a different voltage depending on the pressure force felt at the nozzle. This pressure force is due to atmospheric pressure as well as the water density, gravity, and depth. As the depth changes, the pressure on the nozzle will change and consequently the voltage output. However, when a gauge type pressure sensor is selected, atmospheric pressure is no longer needed. Atmospheric pressure is automatically subtracted off of both voltage measurements when a gauge type is used. In order to select the right pressure sensor, design considerations such as operating pressure and temperature, as well as voltage input and output and cost must be taken into account. A standard sea perch ROB is used in a swimming pool in depths of zero to roughly 15 feet with chlorinated water. In order to purchase this pressure sensor, I simply went to DigiKey's website, typed in pressure sensor in the search key, and was able to navigate to the many pressure sensors they have available. As can be seen here, there are many different design considerations that can be taken into account, as there are thousands of different pressure sensors. For this application, using a sea perch, I was able to select several of the design considerations that were most important. As I navigate, I'm able to find a selection of pressure sensors that would function for me. I grab the one that's financially affordable. After the pressure sensor has been purchased, it must be attached to the 50-foot cable tether. This cable must be stripped at both ends and have all four wires exposed. Each of these wires will be soldered on to one of the pins of the pressure sensor. Be sure to be careful soldering as to not have a short between these pins. This brief video demonstrates what it looks like after the wires have been soldered on. Step three is to simply waterproof the pressure sensor. There are several electronic components of the pressure sensor that cannot get wet. To waterproof the pressure transducer, I simply made a mold and poured in a two-part casting urethane, as mentioned in the material section, to form a hard plastic outer core for the pressure transducer. This brief video shows the pressure transducer in the two-part casting urethane as it sets in the mold. Okay, we're making progress. Now that we have a waterproofed pressure sensor, it's time to attach it to the ROV frame. Be sure to mount it vertically as to not allow flow directly into the nozzle. This flow would distort the pressure felt by the sensor and change the voltage readout. Use two zip ties to attach the pressure transducer to the frame and another zip tie every five feet to attach the two cables together. In this picture and in the video, I've only used tape, but in your case, you will use the zip ties. We have the little pressure transducer connected on the side of the ROV. When you make it, you will use zip ties or some other more permanent form of attachment. Ideally something that um, isn't prone to get loose underwater. We have the cable coming out of the back. And the other end of the cable comes to the surface of the water. The pressure sensor is powered by the same 12 volt battery that powers the sea perch. The sea perch, however, uses 12 volts and the pressure sensor only needs 10. The first pin of the pressure sensor is attached to this red cable shown here. The 12 volt battery is connected to the yellow 
and the ground or pin 3 is connected to the green one. This can be done in a breadboard as demonstrated in this video. There's ground, the 12 volt coming in, and 10 volts coming out. To store and record the voltages being output by the pressure sensor, I used a LabQuest. The LabQuest has two alligator clips. The black alligator clip connects to the green wire, and the red alligator clip connects to the black wire. This is demonstrated in the video. The LabQuest, which conveniently measures the data, the voltage coming out of the pressure transducer as we change depths. These voltage outputs can easily be turned into depths using this conversion table. I carefully calibrated the pressure sensor using known depths and linear regression. Your pressure sensor can be tested for accuracy using several known depths in a swimming pool. Simply measure the depth, submerge the ROV to that depth, and read the voltage output. Then you can test how closely your voltage outputs match the conversion table. You can definitely change the design I have recommended. You can purchase a pressure sensor capable of much deeper ranges and calibrate it to be used for those ranges. Now for the test run, we throw the seat perch out into the water and we can venture down and change depths and as I go lower you can see I can tell the lab quest to run and collect data and sure enough it starts spitting out the voltage as I change depths and I can actually raise this and as it comes to the surface it returns a different voltage value here it's only three feet of depth but we can still see the change in voltage being recorded. So these voltages would be red with the calibration curve mentioned earlier. And you could consequently see how deep you are in the water as you move your sea perch. I hope you've enjoyed building the depth gauge from a pressure sensor so you can attach it to your sea perch and begin seeing the depths that you're able to achieve.